Hello, mathematicians. This is Mr. Garcia. And today we're back with another lesson on 3D shapes and figures. Today is lesson 7.5, which is cross sections and solids of revolution. And we're going to talk about what all of that means. So as always, let's start with our objective here. I can identify the shape that results from a cross section of a 3D shape and identify the 3D shape formed by rotating a 2D shape. So there's two parts we're gonna be talking about here. And let's start with the cross section of 3D shapes. So what the cross section means, if you can imagine slicing an orange open so you can eat it, you're looking at a cross section there. A cross section is formed whenever you cut a shape in some direction, and you look at that shape from a flat surface. So I'm all I'm doing is cutting a 3D shape along a plane. And remember that the difference between a line and a plane is that a line is just one straight line, really, with no dimensions other than a length. But a plane is some kind of flat surface that extends out forever and ever, like your desk, like a table, some flat surface, that's a plane. And we're gonna be cutting these shapes along a plane. Now there's three directions that we can choose to cut this shape. We can cut it parallel to the base, we can cut it perpendicular to the base, and we can cut it obliquely. And over here, Mr. Garcia is gonna show us what each of those means. When I wanna cut a shape to see its cross section, I can cut it any number of ways, but the most common way is either parallel to the base, in other words, the same direction as the base, or perpendicular to the base, going down on the base. So for example, let's cut this parallel to the base first. So since I know this is a cylinder and my base is this circle here, I'm gonna cut it in the same direction that this circle is, I'm gonna cut it straight down like this. So when I do that, I wanna look at my cross section and see what shape I end up with. And so there's my cut, and I see that my cross section is still a circle. So that tells us that maybe if I'm cutting parallel to the base, I might end up with the same shape as the base for my cross section. Now, what about if I cut this perpendicular to the base? Again, remember that perpendicular means that I'm gonna be cutting it this way now. So let's try that. Let's see what happens, what shape I get when I cut this perpendicular to the base. As I'm cutting, try not to deform the shape too much. And there we go. So now my cross section, if I look at this straight down, I fix that a little bit, looks like a rectangle. So depending on which direction I cut it, I'll end up with some kind of different shape for the cross section. Now another way that I can cut a 3D figure is obliquely. And what that means is I'm not cutting it along the base or perpendicular to the base instead, I'm cutting it in some diagonal direction that doesn't follow the base or the line, the plane perpendicular to the base. So for example, obliquely would be diagonally like this. So let's cut this obliquely. And now we have a cross section that is more of an oval shape. So if I cut this obliquely, I end up with an oval shape instead of the circular or rectangular shape we saw earlier. All right, so now that we know that, I'm gonna show you guys a little tool that we're gonna be using to look at these cross sections here. And I'll put the link to this website in the video description so that you guys can go to it later and check it out, play around with it yourself. So let's take a look here. And what we're looking at here is obviously a cone here, but we also see that we have the plane. And this orange shape here is the cross section of the shape. 
Now, if I look at this right now, if I align it this way, we can see that the plane is parallel to the base. And the shape that that gives us is a circle. So any plane that's parallel to the base on a cone is going to give us a circle. But when I move this around and I rotate my plane now, I can see that there's different shapes being formed. Let me move it this way so we can see it. For example, if I keep moving this way, I can see an oval, an ellipse shape. Then I start getting a parabola, like an x squared function. And if I keep going so that the plane is perpendicular to the base, I end up with a triangle as my cross section. So if I cut a cone perpendicular to the base, then my cross section will look like a triangle. Now let's take a look at a rectangular pyramid. And again, my base is starting off parallel to the base. Now, if I look at this carefully though, now I'm gonna look at it from the top down. As I move my base up and down, do you think that the cross section is similar, geometrically similar to the base? And the answer is that yes, it is similar because we have the same exact rectangle being formed. It's just a different size. So if I move the base down, I mean the cross section plane down, it's still the same shape as the base, but it's a different size and it gets smaller, getting smaller as I move up the shape. Now let's try to look at what happens when I rotate this. So if I rotate it this way, I'm getting various types of quadrilaterals. I rotate it this way. Now I've got other shapes happening. Like look here. What I have right now on the screen is a trapezoid. I can tell because these bases are parallel and these sides are not. So I can make a trapezoid here. I could even make some other weird shapes. For example, if I rotate this one now, I've got all kinds of crazy shapes happening like this one right here. Or I can rotate it more and I've got that and so on. And so now I have a tetrahedron here, otherwise known as a triangular pyramid as well. And I start off with my cross section plane per parallel to the base. So here's my base down here and I see that it's parallel. So as I move this cross section up and down, then we can see it's still similar to my base, geometrically similar, it's the same shape. It just gets bigger as I move it down or smaller as I move it up. So that's parallel to the base. Let's take a look at what happens when it's perpendicular to my base. So when it's perpendicular to my base, I end up with a trapezoid, a quadrilateral in here. And if I rotate this even more, I can also end up with a triangle. In fact, I can end up with triangles different ways. I can rotate this one a little bit down here. I still have quadrilaterals this way, but then like this, I end up with a triangle. I rotate around, I still got triangles here. It's pretty fun to play around with this. Like I said, I'll have the link in the description. Let's take a look at triangular prisms now. If you look at the cross-sectional plane, if I move that up and down, the size isn't changing anymore. It's staying the same. That's because now the cross-section is congruent to the basis. There's no size changing at all. It's still the same exact triangle. So now in a prism, my base and my cross section are congruent. Now that's if the cross section is parallel to the base. Let's look at what happens if the cross section is perpendicular to the base. 
So now my cross section is perpendicular and you see that I have a rectangle. And if I rotate this cross sectional plane around, it's still a tri rectangle, I mean, all the way around. Rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. I could also get a triangle if I rotate this this way and then I rotate it this way. Here's a trapezoid, as you can see, and there's a triangle as well. So the triangle is if I cut it obliquely, but parallel and perpend or in parallel as well. Parallel gives me a triangle, but perpendicular gives me a rectangle in this case. By the way, the password that you're going to need for the assignment is King, K-I-N-G. So don't forget about that. Make sure you get that password, K-I-N-G, King, at the end of the assignment. Now we're taking a look at a rectangular prism. And again, if I move the cross section up and down, my cross section is congruent to the basis when the cross section is parallel to the basis. And if I have a perpendicular cross section, then I still get a rectangle. And in fact, this rectangle now is congruent to these faces. If I rotate it all the way around like this, then this is congruent. This cross section now is congruent to these faces. Isn't that great? So in a rectangular prism, as long as the cross section is perpendicular to any of the faces, it'll be parallel to some faces. So it'll be congruent to those faces. But again, if I make it oblique though, that's not true anymore. Oblique, I can end up with rectangles. I can end up with squares. In fact, I could even end up with a pentagon. And I think there's a way that I can end up with a triangle. I have to play around with it a little bit. There we go. So I can also make a triangle obliquely if I cut it just the right way. So now sphere, you see that my cross section here forms a circle. And if I have that cross section along the diameter, it forms the great circle that we talked about in the last lesson. Remember the great circle goes through the diameter through the widest part of the sphere. And really, if I rotate this any way, any direction, my cross section will always be a circle. Any way that I rotate it, it's really not. You would think that I could get an ellipse here somewhere, an oval, but I really can't. Any cross section resulting from a spear will always be a circle. Finally, the last cross section that we have is a cylinder. If I look at the cross section parallel to the basis, it is a circle, just like the bases are circle. Now, as I rotate this cross section, for example, like this, I end up with an ellipse, an oval here. I can spin that around, got an oval. And as I keep rotating this cross-sectional plane, I end up with a cut oval. I end up with this weird barrel shape type deal where the ends are a little curved inward, but it's kind of a quadrilateral. And as I keep going and I make my base perpendicular, I make my cross-section perpendicular, I mean, then I end up with a rectangle. So now that we looked at cross sections of 3D shapes, there's one thing that I hope you noticed in all this is that when I want to find a cross section, I'm basically looking for a 2D shape that was formed from cutting a 3D shape in some direction. So I'm looking for a 2D shape from a 3D shape. What we're going to talk about next is the exact opposite. Solids of revolutions, what that means is a 2D shape is rotated along an axis to create 
a 3D shape. So for example, let's take a look down here. I have this green line that's going to represent my axis of revolution. And that red shape here is a rectangle, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to be rotating this rectangle around the axis of revolution. So if you can imagine it in your head, what's happening here. I'm taking this and I'm spinning it around, around the axis of revolution here. And so what I end up with, and I'm gonna screw that up a little bit, but that's okay, is a cylinder shape. So when I rotate a rectangle around the axis of revolution, I end up with a cylinder shape. Now, my drawing skills are not that great. So let's take a look at again GeoGebra that also has a revolution applet here. So again, here's a rectangle and I'm going to be rotating these around the Z axis. So as I rotate this rectangle here, you see that it's forming, it forms in fact a cylinder. And as I rotate again, you can see how this rectangle rotates to form that cylinder. You can look at it here. I don't want that. So I've got a cylinder here that came about when I rotated a rectangle. Now let's say that instead of a rectangle, let me fix this right up real quick. Let's say that instead of a rectangle, I want to rotate a triangle. So if I rotate this triangle, let's start here. I end up with a cone. So now I've got a cone here that came about when I rotated my triangle. And again, you can see how I start from the triangle. I rotate it to get my cone shape. Now you can rotate any shape, but basically what you're gonna end up is with some kind of round 3D shape. So remember that those are the cones, the cylinders, and the spear. So any shape that you rotate is gonna give you one of those three shapes, a cone, a cylinder, or a spear. Well, guys, like I said, I'm going to include the link for this website in the description. You can click on that and play around with it yourself. So you can see how these shapes, when you cut them, it results in different shapes. Or when you rotate them, it results in different shapes. All right. So I hope you had a great day. I hope this helped you learn a little bit. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. And until next time.